Well, it's a fact that the vast majority of working South Africans will not be able to retire comfortably. Saving is imperative, but where do you put your cash? The debate continues to rage around property versus stocks. And this week, two passionate investors have expressed their opinion in the press. On the side of buy to let property is Neil Foster, who's an investment coach and founder of Organic Growth. And someone who's skeptical about buy to let is Magnus Haystack, director at Brenthurst Wealth. Good evening to you gentlemen. Mm. Neil, let's start with you because you say that buy to let has worked. You have proof and it's worked for you yourself. Yes, well my story is um, in about two th the year 2000 I read uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, uh, Robert Kiyosaki's book and it changed the way I thought because until then I was buying liabilities and calling them assets and I started thinking about how to invest and I came across uh, townhouse investment in good areas. So what I did is I I started buying uh, small townhouses in the northern suburbs of Johannesburg, good areas, Morningside, Santon, North Riding, and it's really worked for me. Um, the townhouses I bought back then have, have already paid for both my daughter's university educations, and uh, my retirement is quite secure. So great returns. You're skeptical, Magnus? Not, not really, but I'm saying people must be careful. You've got to buy in the right area, and you've got to buy with the right aim in, in mind. A lot of people think it's easy, and they buy properties in the wrong area, they, and, and especially when they buy them cash when they retire. And now you've got an asset, one geographical area, producing uh, a, an income. And over time, property is a wasting asset. And that, a lot of people tend to forget that. And the area can change. And you don't have the liquidity that you have of a stock market investment. Mm -hmm. uh, you, can, you can buy listed property stocks, and you can sell a little bit. So I'm not saying it's, it's a bad one, but a lot of people go into it blindly, don't do their homework. They buy in the wrong area, and 10 or 15 years down the line, that area has gone and undergone some change. And then you really battle to sell. A lot of people are, are property owners in South Africa today, and they cannot sell them. There's just no market. The banks don't want to finance them. Neil, respond to that. How do you then pick the area? Because things could change. Yes, I, I agree with what Magnus has said on many accounts. Um, the nice thing about property is that areas do degrade, but they degrade slowly, so you've got time to do it. Uh, but one thing that I have found is that the biggest risk of property investment is the investor himself. He buys the wrong property in the wrong area at the wrong price. Uh, he gets the wrong tenant in there. Uh, he loses his shirt and then tells everybody property's bad. Because dodgy tenants are, are risky as well. Dodgy tenants are risky and bad property management and you know, slapdash property management. But how do you get around the risks? Um, I, th I would say get a p good property coach, a mentor, somebody who's gone before you, who's done it successfully. And, and get them to show you the ropes. Mm. It's, a, it's an art and a science. It's not, it's not something that you can just read in a book and do. Ma Magnus, I guess it does have this, um, this positive in, in that the bank will give you money. So, so individuals can, can gear and can go and use that money to make money. Yes, if the banks provide the liquidity. I mean, in a previous property boom, which ended in 2007, 2008, banks were handing out bonds like, like confetti, and it was fantastic. There, there was a lot of liquidity. You could refinance at short notice. You could sell and flip properties, but ever since 2007, the New Credit Act came in, so that there's a scarcity of capital, and banks have been very, very tight on money, and a lot of people thought, oh, I'll refinance when, when, when the time comes, and the banks have said, no, mm. they've got to do a credit check on your entire assets and liabilities, and a lot of people have fallen into a liquidity trap where they have assets, they're asset rich, but income poor. They don't have income, they cannot sell half of a property or a quarter, so, it depends very much on timing, depends very much on how you do it. And unfortunately, a lot of people go in blindly thinking it's an easy mm. way to make money. It's not. Well, I guess you're both saying the th same thing. Be, be careful um, if, if you do it. I know your opinion, uh, Neil. You're, you're passionate about buy to let. Magnus, right now, given uh, property, given the fact that the, the stock market is up, but it could go down, should you invest in property or stocks? You know, property is a very emotional thing. You don't see whether the property values go up or down on a daily basis. Whereas the stock market you do, and if you forget about that, if you're buying a stock, or especially a property stock on the, on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, you're actually just buying the income. And you should forget about the fluctuations, the ups and downs. You're buying an income stream. And over the last 12 years, property on the J JSE has been a phenomenal investment. And it can go up and down, but the income stream has been rising at 12%. Plus, you've got the liquidity, which I like, and a lot of investors like liquidity. 
a final word from, from you, just advice to investors who want to start getting into the buy-to-let market. My advice is the buying time is starting now. We're at the beginning of a buying season. The banks are starting to, to release money. I saw my first 100% bond about three or four months ago. So that's exciting. The prices are still low and the rentals are high. So it's, it's a good time to buy. But get a good coach. Get somebody to show you how to do it. Because if I try to do what Magnus does and go and trade in shares myself without knowing what he knows, I'm going to lose everything. And it's the same with property. The problem with property is the man in the street, the guys that I'm really trying to help here, um, they have a go at it. And don't have a go at it. Find out how to do it properly before you start. A final word, uh, advice to investors out there, people who are worried hearing these stats that that 75% of working South Africans uh, will not be able to retire and, and keep their living standards. Well, they're going to retire, but it's not going to be a great retirement. So yes, that's quite true. I'm not saying don't look at property, but don't put everything into one basket. Remember, liquidity is very important. And so you've got to get the right balance. And very importantly, buy in the right area. Do your homework. Don't buy on emotional grounds. Do the numbers. All right. Thank you very much, Thanks as both gentlemen. Neil Foster from Organic Growth and Magnus Haystack from Brent Hurst Wealth. And I will have a look at your markets in the next half hour.